seem like, but it works. But I also want to do an Arduino toy hacking day. I met Bob at an event at Mad Lab, which is where Bob is involved with the hack man there. And I wanted Bob to come to our event, but he can't. So I crowdsourced and asked people, somebody tell me what can I do about Arduino, how can I make it work, and I'm having to learn. So today, I shoehorned Bob to do the talk. Kind of got Shanghai into this. Yeah, shoehorned. And this is really for me, this talk, but hopefully you'll get something out of it. So I, I ordered some Arduinos, and they came yesterday in my classroom. I got to be excited because they come in a nice little box. If you buy the, the genuine one, that's it. They come in a nice little box with a little sticker on the box. You open the box, and, and oh wow. And then when you look inside, you spend £20. Stickers! <laughs> <laughs> Six stickers. They say open source. DIY hacked, and um, there's some there's a little heart and the Arduino logo. You also get all this stuff, which is all like about the open source hardware thing and the statement and all this, and you get an Arduino inside. Okay, you don't get a cable or anything like that. Now, I, I, I know a little bit about them, but I'm going to hand over to Bob who's going to talk to us about Arduinos. Ar Arduino. Right. So first of all, what is Arduino? It's it's not just that board there, it's a kind of whole ecosystem around the board. So you do have the hardware, you've also got the Arduino development environment, which is the software you use to actually write your Arduino code. And you've got the kind of other hardware environment around it, so you can get plug-in modules called Shields. These allow you to add extra hardware to your Arduino. So if you want to, say, connect to a network, you get an Ethernet shield, you plug it on, and you've got Ethernet. You want to drive motors, you get a motor driver shield. Plug that on, you can drive motors. It's pretty cool <laughs> the number of shields that are out there nowadays. Is it with that small this one this one? You can do, but you need external hardware to do it, and that's what the shield provides. It's basically taking a bunch of external hardware you'd need to plug in and putting it on a single board with the standard kind of Arduino connectors on. <laughs> cool. Can I add this bit in? And tell me if I'm wrong. You can plug LEDs straight into it because they're low yeah. power consumption. They only use like 100 milliamps yeah. or something. So you can plug LEDs in. You can also you can connect switches in, and you might have to tinker about a bit, like a switch to, to work. You might have to put this thing called a D-bounce into it. Um, temperature sensors, uh, photo transistors, a few things I can plug in. But anything that's high power, like a motor or a solenoid or a heater, if you plug that in. It might not zap your computer, but probably zap your uh, Arduino board. Yeah. But too much power runs through it. Do you really need a higher spec one before the base one just to do anything? Well, the, the whole point of it is the kind of modularity of the system. So you don't get everything on a single board because then that board would cost £100. Yeah. You get the board that costs £20 and you put another thing on it that costs a ten, And you've got you know, your basic development board system there without having to get loads of superfluous hardware you're not interested in. That's the kind of um, ethos behind the whole Arduino idea. Um, so, and the, the other good thing about the shields is they'll often come with software libraries for driving the components on that shield. So you get a motor driver shield, it comes with some example software for how to drive motors using it. It has all the code there, you can have a look at it, you can modify it, you can do whatever you want with it. It's great. Um, so, let's look at the hardware, basically. This is the Arduino board, it's a bit bigger than that one, that's not the actual size or anything. Um, so, what? <laughs> Kenny Everett, big fan. <laughs> So what we've got on there, we've got a USB port, you plug it into the computer, you program it using this port, so you don't need any external hardware once you've got your Arduino and your USB cable. It can also be powered over this, and you can use it for communications back to the computer. So if you write a sketch that needs to talk to the computer to do something, you can have a program on your computer sending data through to the Arduino. The Arduino doing all the input and output stuff that's quite difficult to do from a PC box itself, you can kind of interact with more physical things. You have the processor. This is a complete computer and a chip, basically. 
It's small, it's self-contained, it's got all the kind of RAM, it's got the storage on there and everything. Um, you can buy these separately, they go to about £3. Um, they come with a bit of software on there called the bootloader, which is how you actually load the software through the Arduino IDE into it. Um, but that's the only thing that makes that chip an Arduino chip. Um, you have a power connector. If you don't want to have it plugged into a PC all the time, you can plug this power connector and you can plug it into a power brick to go into your wall. You can plug it into a 9 volt battery or the like. I think as long as you're above 6 volts ish, then you can power anything off that pretty much. Sorry? What's the maximum voltage on the PC? I think it's about 20. So you can get a wide variety of power bricks for it. Um, the only thing to watch out for is current on that, because this here is the um, voltage regulator. So this takes the input voltage from here and does it down to the 5 volt that it uses internally. Um, this will only go up to about an amp though total. So if you've got things pulling lots of power off of the 5 volt pins, you can have trouble with that. So yeah, next we have the digital pins. All on the top, you've got 13 of those. Um, some of them have other functionality. You've got these ones here with the little tilde next to them. A PWM, which lets you do a kind of analog-esque output. So if you, say, want to dim a light bulb or something like that, you'd hook it up to the PWM pin and you'd do an analog write, say 50%, and that would be half on. Ish. Oops, where's that gone? What's happening? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, the My computer's just... Oh, never mind, it's a screenshot I took earlier. That was confusing. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> analog, in <laughs> analog input pins. So, say you have a rotary switch or a light sensor or something like that, where you want to sense not just that it's on or off, but how on or off it is. You can hook one of those up to these analog inputs, and back from that you get a number between 0 and 1,023. So 0 is all the way off, 1,023 is all the way off. Um, halfway is halfway, obviously. Um, okay, so I've gone to the software next. I've given kind of a fairly high level overview of the hardware there. I'm going to go on to the software, kind of how you get it, where you get it from. Well, you get it from arduino.cc. You get it by clicking download and choosing the right one for your operating system. You need to install a couple of other things. Um, the software itself is written in Java, so you need that. But apart from that, you can get away without downloading any more stuff. It's cross-platform, Windows, Linux, Mac OS, are all available, they're all distributed by Arduino themselves. It's very easy install, you just download it, click install, sorted. Um, sometime, sometimes when you actually plug the board in, you'll need a driver on Windows, you find. Sometimes that happens, sometimes that doesn't, not sure why, but you download that again from arduino.cc. Um, Linux and Mac have never had that problem, never needed it really. Um, okay, and um, this is the idea. It's a fairly basic development environment. There's, there's no bells or whistles. Basically, you use this button here, you use this button here, sometimes you use this one, but that's about it. <laughs> it's, it's not particularly advanced. So, you write your code in this bit, you press this button which compiles it, so it turns that into a, into, um, so a program. So it's written in C, isn't it? It's C++. C++. Yeah. Um, there, are, there are lots of um, examples of code out there that people share in the community. So you could, you could literally plug it in, paste some code in, and then do you call it flashing it when you send it yeah. to... So if it's written in C++, how do we do the bits and bytes? Um, I'll show game. you in a minute. Yeah. Right, um, so yeah, 
This one compiles and verifies it. If you've got any errors in your code, you'll get an error message down here when you do that. If you don't, you'll get a done compiling over here, and good to go. Uh, this one here uploads it to the Arduino, so that's flashing it onto the Arduino itself, making the Arduino run your software. This one here is the serial monitor. So that, if you've got some code on your Arduino that talks back to the PC, that's a piece of software that you can use to send and receive stuff from the computer by just typing it in. It's a fairly handy way of doing it. So, that's kind of basics of that. I'll show some actual code examples. Just a final thought to get that ready. There's, um, there are a lot of support groups around. In Liverpool, there's a, very, there's a strong community of people who are working on this. Uh, I mentioned Hackman, uh, based, based at Mad Lab in Manchester. They were doing, um, in November, on a Saturday, they are doing a course, like a beginner's guide to Arduino. I think it's about, it's around about the £100 price mark, but you get a lot of packed materials to take You do get the kind of Arduino included in that, and a kind of basic electronics kit of stuff that you can plug into the Arduino. On the 22nd of October, that next Saturday, there's a Nottingham group as well that are doing a, a, an introduction to Arduino as well. Um, okay, so software-wise, this is pretty much the hello world of Arduino. You have two, you've got two functions here. Setup, that runs when the Arduino is first plugged in. So the first thing it does is it runs setup. So everything in here is, you know, checking, make sure your pins are set to inputs or outputs, turning on any external hardware, things like that. And then you've got loop. What loop does is, after setup's run, it goes to here, it goes to here, it goes back. It just keeps looping and looping and looping forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And ever. Um, so, what this one's doing, it's in setup, it's going to pin 13. Pin 13 is fairly handy on the Arduino because it has a little LED on it. So you've got a little light, you can flash, or you can use that. Every Arduino has got them. So it's, it's a very handy kind of check to make sure that your Arduino is working and it's talking back to the computer. So what we're doing is we're setting pin 13 to an output. So we're driving that now. Um, it's turned off by default, so we don't need to do anything else in the setup. We're going to the loop. Digital write, so we're writing out to pin 13. We're sending a 1 to there. 1, logic level high, it's turning that output on. And then, so now the LED will be on. We go delay 1000, that's in million seconds. That's the one. So that's the second, it should wait for a second. Then it goes on to the next one. Digital write 13 0. 0 is logic level low, it's turning the output off. And then again, we're delaying for another second. Here. So, what this will do, it turns the thing on, flashes on, flashes off, flashes on, flashes off, flashes on, flashes off. Keeps doing that forever and ever. It's not particularly advanced software that we're writing here, it, it's a test to make sure that everything works. Um, in theory, you could have it. Yeah. You want to try and flash that yeah. to you your Arduino now. You could have it light up in theory for one millisecond and a lot for one millisecond, yeah. but it would either look like it was not on or not off. It would look like you can't see it that way. This is the bit where everything's probably going to explode. So, it's actually for the loop in with an LED tools. flashing on it at the moment. Tools. There is a program that's already loaded. Oh, something else is happening. Yeah. It's, it's loaded up on this screen for some reason. So I'm choosing the Arduino Uno from the list, and I'm also saying which port it's connected to. So now, if I click verify, first of all, that's now compiling the code, as you can see down here. Done compiling. Sketch size, you can pretty much ignore that. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll click upload. Now hopefully that should compile the thing and then it sends it through there to there. Done uploading, so is that now flashing? There was a sequence of flashing on that because yeah. the code and now it's flashing it. Yeah, yeah. So that's flashing now, so that one works. 
Um, Could you change it to like flashes on twice and then a longer delay, or, or ch change the off period to four seconds so we change the frequency of the oscillation? So, for that, it's flashing on one, off one, and now the seed sucked in. Now the light is staying on for one and off for four seconds. Give that man a round of applause. <laughs> We've got one here that's now a little bit more advanced. Bob, yeah? can you show the guys the huge number of sample examples in the, in the menu? Yes. So, so I would, but the menu shows me this. The story I've heard was that the Arduino was originally conceived to help a group of artists in northern Milan who wanted to create kinetic sculptures that would move without having to know a lot of electronics. But it's, it's grown from there. Right, so this is the example code that comes with it. All these ones at the top are the ones that you actually get with Arduino itself. These ones at the bottom are kind of extra ones yeah, for using specific bits of hardware. So this one talks to a little liquid crystal display. <coughs> this one reads and writes with an SD card. It's some fairly handy stuff if you're building a kind of embedded piece of hardware.